Uh, there are a number of etiquettes of the aqiqah, uh, a number of etiquettes of when the child is born. Uh, well, first and foremost, even before the child is born, uh, it is of the etiquettes of a Muslim that you increase your ibadah, you increase your dua, that Allah Azza wa Jal make this child a righteous child. And we already preceded a half an hour ago about Ibrahim alayhi salam making dua for his unborn progeny and grandchildren, great grandchildren after him, when he said, Rabbi Jalni muqim as salati wa min dhurriyati. Oh Allah, make me and my children after me, those who establish the salah. So even before the child is born, subhanAllah, even before you are married, it is sunnah to start making dua for your children that they are of the righteous. Uh, and so alhamdulillah you are about to become a father. So you make dua that Allah Azza wa Jal uh, helps this child and makes him a righteous person. And also as a word of advice, this too should be a time for you to increase your own religiosity, to increase your own closeness to Allah, because there is no better way to guarantee that your child will be righteous than you and your wife becoming righteous as well. Uh, with regards to the adab of the aqiqah, of the adab is that uh, and I do believe it is authentic hadith, if that's what you're asking about, is that the uh, adhan be given gently in the right ear of the uh, child. And that uh, the, ch the child, if it is a boy, that you do an aqiqah for the child and you sacrifice uh, two lambs or two sheep or two goats and you uh, hold a, uh, a an aqiqah. Uh, and that also that you name the child on the seventh day and the aqiqah is on the seventh day. Of course, in our times, on our times, the seventh day might not be convenient because people cannot come. There is no haraj if you then increase the number of days uh, so that it becomes the weekend. There's not a sin upon you to do so, but it is better to do it on the uh, seventh day. Also, uh, the Prophet ﷺ would shave off the hair uh, of the boy and he would give its weight in gold. Now, its weight in gold doesn't mean you go and you weigh the hair because that hair cannot be weighed even by uh, an instrument that uh, of a fine quality. It means you just give some amount uh, of silver and charity and what this means it really it, 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 uh, it is equivalent to probably less than five or ten pounds uh, and the point being that you give some amount of charity on behalf of the child these are the main etiquettes of, uh, of a new child uh, as for the issue of chewing of the date scholars have differed was this specific for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because this was something that he had a blessed uh, saliva and so mixing the saliva with the saliva of the child would be something blessed. Or was it simply a sunnah that any other person should do? Uh, in my humble opinion, if you wish to do it, you may do so uh, with the intention of imitating the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, but nobody's uh, uh, chewed date is going to be blessed anymore. That was only for the Prophet ﷺ. Everybody else, uh, their chewed date is simply a chewed date. Nothing wrong with that. And I have spoken to some doctors who told me that in fact this is a very healthy uh, thing to put in the stomach of a newborn child and that is uh, a chewed date without the seed obviously and that it is something that helps the child and fortifies him and gives him antibiotics and whatnot or, or antibodies excuse me antibiotics uh, the point being I don't see a harm in uh, an elderly person the, the grandfather of the child let's say uh, symbolically chewing the date for the child and then putting it in the child's mouth with the realization that it's not going to be barakah it's not going to be blessed it is simply a resurrection of the sunnah